So welcome back. FDI, we've talked about provides economies of scale. Now, I don't think FDI provides economies of scale as much as, say, uh, exporting does. Because if you're manufacturing in a plant domestically and you export and you open up your market to more units, then that plant in itself has better economies of scale and you lower your cost. However, with economies of scale across the world, as long as you can somehow lower all of your fixed costs together, then you have your economies of scale. You do have managerial resource efficiencies because you can have managers that have that manage multiple plants, one manager that man manages multiple plants, and you can have engineering to uh, support multiple plants. I remember my father at one point in time was the vice president of Gould, and he managed a plant in London, managed a plant in Cleveland, Ohio, as well as in Tijuana, Mexico. So one plant manager managed all three plants because they made the same things. So there was economies of scales there. And then also you do get some financial economies in, in addition to that. So the types of FDI, the first one is greenfield investment versus mergers and acquisition. A greenfield investment means you're going to build your plant your own. Merger and acquisition means you're either going to merge with another company um, with like um, Compact and HP did or acquisitions, another uh, merger would be the, um, yeah, Compact and, and uh, HP would be a good merger. Uh, the other, and an acquisition, and I just spoke of an acquisition, and that would be Lenovo purchasing the IBM ThinkPad. Those are all different types of FDI. So the nature of ownership, you can be wholly owned by the particular MNE, it can be a joint venture with the MNE. It could be an, an investment with the MNE. And then you've got your levels, which is vertical and horizontal, which we're going to talk about in just a minute. So there's your greenfield investment. And there's your definition of merger and acquisition. We just talked about that. The equity participation, generally speaking, oftentimes, if you're a huge MNE like GE, you don't want to share any type of ownership, so you will do a, a wholly owned direct investment. Sometimes, though, you want to do a joint partnership or a joint venture. Saturn and GM did a uh, joint venture. Chrysler and Daimler, that was actually a merger with the Daimler Chrysler. Another um, joint venture would be uh, the Mitsubishi and Chrysler, the Spider. There was a car called the Spider, and that was a Mitsubishi and a joint venture between Mitsubishi and Chrysler. Another joint venture would be Nexpress, which was a joint venture between Heidelberg Press and Kodak. So now you've got levels of integration. This is very important because it's covered on the test. Vertical integration is when you buy throughout the value chain. So if you look at HP, HP did a vertical integration when they bought Compact. HP owned the printing industry. Compact was a player in the computing industry. This was before Com HP had a real presence in the personal computing. So they bought Compact so that they could vertically integrate. Another example of vertical integration would be Microsoft, who uh, came out with their Surface Pro. So not only do they own the Windows software, now they own hardware for it. Horizontal integration is when you seek to own the activity involved in a single stage of its value chain, where a software company will buy another software company. A computer company will buy another computer company. Horizontal integration would be Lenovo, who was already in the personal computing, buying the ThinkPad by IBM. That was horizontal integration. So they're trying to buy up in the same industry versus buying up through the value chain. It's important that you understand that. So ethical connections, 
FDI offers a numerous benefits to the uh, recipient countries as long as there is no taking advantage of which. For instance, when GE goes into a another country, say in Southeast Asia or in some other, uh, let's say in, in South America, and they build a plant, it creates a job, it creates constructions jobs, it creates all kinds, it, takes, it creates tax benefits for the government, it creates all types of opportunities for that particular country, as long as GE is doing the right thing, as long as they're not dumping. Whereas they're coming in and they're offering prices lower to pull out the competition and then increasing their prices later in order to uh, make sure that they're the only competitor. I'm not saying GE does this. That's not what I'm saying. I just use GE as an m and &E. It could be X company. Uh, I'm, I'm certainly, certainly not uh, accusing GE. I think GE is one of the better companies in the world. So there's some different uh, ethical considerations that you can read in those particular bullet points. So collaboration venture is a partnership between two or more firms. We talked about strategic alliances. We talked about joint ventures. Oftentimes you see strategic alliances and sharing of knowledge, joint ventures when they share different things to create a, pro a, a product. Equity joint ventures are formed when one party has all the assets and they use somebody's knowledge or use somebody's engineering or something like that. And then project-based joint ventures are narrow scope and narrow timetable. You can read that there. So that concludes our chapter 14 here in international business. We'll be back with chapter 15 soon. Until then, I hope you're all staying safe and staying healthy.